I learned from my wife the importance of expressions of love. I remember one day I took some of those little round paper circles that you form when you punch holes in paper, and I wrote on them numbers one to a hundred. Turned it over and wrote her a message, one word on each circle. Then I scooped them up and put them in an envelope. I thought she'd get a good laugh. When she passed away, I found in her private things how much she appreciated the simple messages that we shared with each other. I noted that she'd carefully pasted every one of those circles on a piece of paper as if they were a valuable treasure. I am confident that when in our future, I will see her again beyond the veil. We will recognize that we have become even more deeply in love we will appreciate each other even more. We want to be together forever because we love each other. It just has to be forever. It, it, it wouldn't make sense for, for us to come this far and have it get this good and then not be perpetuated. I'm glad that I'll be able to have this blessing in my life now and the life to come. 
Marriage provides an ideal setting for overcoming any tendency to be selfish or self-centered. Don't withhold those natural expressions of love. Express gratitude for what your spouse does for you. Express that love and gratitude often. That will make life far richer and more pleasant and purposeful. Have faith in those promises and live to be worthy of them. a scripture is to forge a new friendship it's like discovering a new individual who can help in time of need give inspiration and comfort and be a source of motivation for needed change for example committing to memory this psalm has been for me a source of power and understanding the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands, and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Pondering a scripture like that gives a great deal of direction to life. The scriptures can form a foundation of support they can provide an incredibly large resource of willing friends who can help us. A memorized scripture becomes an enduring friend that is not weakened by the passage of time. I've never met Elder Scott in person, 
but I feel an indescribable closeness to him. Maybe it's because of the way his messages always brings me peace. In fact, Elder Scott is one of the reasons why I look forward to General Conference so much. I love the way the Spirit fills my home during General Conference. Elder Scott has a unique way of telling me I need to do better, but he does it in a loving way which motivates me to action. I know that he tells us the things that the Lord wants us to know. I know that he is a witness of Jesus Christ, and that if we will heed Elder Scott's words, as well as all of those of the Twelve and First Presidency, we will be blessed in this life to such a degree that there will not be room enough to receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I know Elder Scott is a prophet called of the Lord. During General Conference, when we have the opportunity of obtaining counsel from God's chosen leaders, I feel my cup overflowing with gratitude. We are so blessed to have our prophet and apostles guiding us in these latter days. When the world is full of chaos, we can have peace in our lives and doing the things we know are right. When we follow the counsel given us by the prophet and the apostles, our lives are blessed tremendously. I know that this gospel is true. I know that there's a living prophet today, and I know that apostles walk on the earth just as they did in the time of Christ. Elder Scott is one of these apostles. He speaks with authority and knowledge about God. He reminds us that God loves us and that we can return to Him in the celestial kingdom. Elder Scott's testimony of marriage for a time and eternity cannot be denied. His love for his wife and children extends through the veil, and there is no doubt that he feels impressions from his beloved wife, Janine. He speaks to us with conviction when telling us there are 15 men that hold all the keys of the kingdom of God, and that all 15 of these men know with absolute confirmed certainty that God lives. Because of their testimony, I also know that God lives. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Book of Mormon is the greatest gift I have been given. It has changed my life. I have been able to attend the St. Louis Temple where I was sealed to my wife. I have been able to do work for my family through baptism and endowment sessions. These things would not be possible if I did not know about the Book of Mormon and its teachings. I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet, and he did see Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ in a vision. With divine help, Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon. I know this book is true, and it is the Word of God. We are led by a living prophet today, Thomas S. Monson. He holds all of the keys of the priesthood. Jesus Christ is the head of our church, and he always will be. We are members of Christ's church. We have the full gospel of Jesus Christ. I testify these things are true in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Elder Scott has touched my life briefly, but personally. I know that he is a very kind and sharing person. His achievements in science art, and church service are a wonderful example. But his deep love for his wife and family are the heart of him. I appreciate his strength of testimony and his dedication as a firm witness of Jesus Christ in every phase and facet of his life. I am grateful for the grace and power of the atonement in my life, and I pray for God's help in all my efforts each day. I testify that as we exercise faith, repentance, and obedience, God fills us with his light and truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>